friendly wager, so we'll see how everything <laughs> shakes out for the end of the game. As we get things started, Florida State being led by Tania Latson coming into the game. Michaela Timpson is on four straight games with the double-double as the Seminoles start off with the basketball. Right away, Tania Latson off the glass and couldn't connect. Cheyenne Day Wilson pushing up the floor. She has been stellar in the last few games, but 10 straight in double digits. So Cheyenne Day Wilson leading the way, the transfer from Duke in her first season with Miami and Florida State. You can see they're starting five at the bottom of your screen. And a turnage also in that lineup starting the last 11 games for the Knowles. These two teams really get up and down in transition, and that shot right there from Day Wilson is, you know, what some coaches would perceive as a bad shot, but that is her shot. She's very capable of making it. Cheyenne Day Wilson, as we talked about, has just been really efficient in the last 10 games, scoring in double figures, understanding she can get it done beyond just shooting from the three-point line. She's definitely a leader. You know, the All-American that comes, I mean, freshman of the year, rookie of the year that hails from Duke. She's definitely the engine to Miami. She's the clip inside of the gun. And so as she goes, so does Miami. Very fitting as she knocks down the first points of the ball game. Three ball from Cheyenne Date Wilson. Sarah, Sarah Bajetti coming off the screen. And we thank you for joining us here at the Watsko Center. Florida State taking on Miami. Second meeting of the season between the two teams. Florida State taking the first one just two weeks ago. Four games left for the Hurricanes. A big one for them as we close the conference play and gear up for the journey to Greensboro. It's just an up and down game, Angel. Both teams just getting out and running and they both have the ability to get out in transition and they like that transitional game. First turnover of the ball game, that's going to be from Jada Patrick. But you can see the pace, as you were alluding to, just understanding north-south is what we're going to see in this ball game. Absolutely, and understanding how that's going to play an impact in the fourth quarter. So those last five minutes, those last seven minutes in that last quarter, it's going to be huge. It's going to come down to who's in the best shape, who makes the least amount of mental mistakes, and who can just sustain whatever lead they have. Sarah Bajetti on the board, knocks down the triple. Sarah Bajetti, and last month was the Naismith Player of the Week for her play. And a season high against Notre Dame as Tanai Latson at the top of the key gets the strip. Couldn't connect on the layup. Miami has numbers. Delia Williams going at turnage, kisses it off the glass, and that's down. I like to call her a little Ferrari. When she's out in the open court, it is very difficult to catch her. She loves going in transition, and she doesn't care about height. She goes right into the chest of the defender, and she finishes really well about the rim. I love that you said a Ferrari, because she has the personality and swag <laughs> that one would have to have with that oh, nickname. Yeah, she's absolutely a character. Turnage off the mark at the top of the key. Here comes Williams. A little up and under, some juice on that one. Back-to-back -back buckets by Williams. And if you're Miami, this is a really good sign, having Jaleel be this active offensively in the game. It is nothing but positive news for Katie Meyer and her staff. Jaleel Williams averaging eight points per game, and here's four of them early. In the first three and a half minutes. So Miami rolling on the offensive end to start, shooting 42% from the field. Florida State on the other side. They are one for eight. 12% looking to change that as we progress. Inside look, that's broken up. So Timpson gets the steal there. Advancement for Tania Latson, and she gets the bucket. Anything going left to Nia Latson is very, very comfortable. She almost prefers going left than going right, although she's right-handed. To Nia Latson, fourth in the conference and scoring 13th nationally. Last year, led the conference in scoring as a freshman as Sarah Bajetti with an early five points for Florida State. 
Just driving it straight down Miami's throat. Miami's going to have to stop the ball high and tight and not allow that type of penetration to get into the gut of their defense. So you can see how fast this game goes between the two teams, Florida State in ACC play, leading the conference in points, averaging about 78 points per game, and Cheyenne Day Wilson responds with a bucket of her own. I don't know, Angel, I haven't seen one of the shot clocks get within 10 seconds yet. We'll keep a track on it. We'll say it's Miss James shot clock analysis. <laughs> on the floor, bodies everywhere. Day Wilson, just when she gets to that sweet spot around the mid-range, she's almost automatic. You know, we saw her in shoot around. We saw her working on those mid-range shots, and that is just her bread and butter. And when she is going, it is going to be very difficult for anyone to stop her with the confidence that she has. She can score at, score at all three levels of the game, and she impacts this Miami team tremendously. Deanna Turnage actually picks up the foul on that last possession, so Cheyenne D. Wilson gets the ball back and makes some magic happen. Well, she's in her bag. Cheyenne Di Day Wilson, excuse me, with eight points to start, and we're just hitting the halfway part of the first quarter. Tania Latson, a bit strong on the shot. Day Wilson, beautiful pass to the bucket. Lattimore with the finish. And you can feel the energy at the Watsco Center. It's raining outside, but it is sunny on the inside. Miami Hurricanes have come to play against this rivalry FSU team, and we're just waiting for FSU to be able to respond. Timpson tried to do just that. Off the mark. Day Wilson is Dwyer off the bounce, going into the paint, couldn't connect. Short for Jasmine Roberts. Third opportunity for the Hurricanes. Dwyer able to come in, scoops it up. Williams going at Sarah Bajetti. That's blocked by Turnage. How many opportunities is Miami going to get? And that one's brought to a close as Timpson gets the rebound. That was quite a possession or several possessions. Sarah Bajetti working the baseline. Very congested on the left side for Florida State with a short shot clock. Sarah Bajetti from the logo in and out. Roberts, Euro step on the inside. One of the contact was able to get the ball off the floor. Look at that effort. Williams going at Timpson, who is leading the league in block shots. Fearless. So Cheyenne Day Wilson on a roll. Early eight points for the sophomore, making some magic happen underneath. Lattimore with the finish. Greatness is a feeling, a moment, a choice, unrelenting, a team effort. Greatness is accomplishing on this field and this one. Greatness is more than winning the game. It's changing it. Greatness is what we do. Accomplish greatness. There are hundreds of different kinds of trucks and SUVs on the road. Meet the wiper blades designed with all of them in mind. Rain-X rugged truck and SUV wiper blades. Engineered with graphene for long-lasting durability. They're high-performing blades for high-performing vehicles. Rain-X, outsmart the elements. Available at your favorite retailer. What even is this? Don't touch my things, gross. Janice, when you bundle your home or renters with your auto, Progressive provides 24-7 protection for almost everything you own. But do you really need... My weighted hoop? It's for my snatched waist. It's my dog chase lounger. Foot treadmill. That's my Tuesday chalice. Purse that says purse. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy chamber. I can't live without oxygen. Solid gold coffee machine. Lake making kit. Really? Can Progressive cover that too? Yes, but... Hi, it's Janice. I'll take five. 
Is my voice on TV right now? Finding your healthy has never been easier. Start with Sprouts. Miami playing with a sense of urgency as they understand what's on the line right now on a 7-0 run. Trying to improve their resume for the tournament. Strength of schedule 50, the net 44, but had some big wins on their resume. Absolutely, the NC State win and the Duke win, and a lot of those wins come at home where it's very tough to beat this Miami Hurricanes team, and they understand the importance of this game. They understand what a win could do just out of respect, although a win or a loss wouldn't necessarily change them in the seeding. But they absolutely have to finish strong in this season in order to get that momentum going into tournament play. Turnover for Miami, one thing that, you know, Katie Meyer may not be thrilled with is just the turnovers early. Right now they have four. Alexis Tucker in the ball game. Amaya Bonner as well. The transfer from Cal Berkeley on the floor for Florida State. Lache Dwyer up top. Bounce that pass to Lattimore. And that's going to fly out of bounds. I thought that was going to you. You know, we did those half-court shots, but you know I can't do it from this spot. <laughs> Put me in a little bit, Angel. <laughs> to your credit, though, you did that in flip-flops. So I can only imagine no respect loss. I only have to look in the rafters and understand what you did. <laughs> Dwyer pulls up in the paint, off to the right. And that will go back to Florida State. You talked about Miami and what they've been able to do at home right now, four and two in conference play, but the, the huge game for them that has really just opened a lot of eyes throughout the ACC, which is one of the toughest leagues in the nation, is their win over the fifth ranked NC State Wolfpack at that time at home and then Duke. Even though they were not ranked at the time, they were in the top 25 prior to that game. Sorry, we're getting beat up over here. <laughs> we're getting beat up, beat up over here uh, by some balloons. It's a blackout at the Watts Gold Center. But absolutely, what you are saying, Angel, is true. You know, we look at, we, oh, we'll look at this replay right here. As Lazaria Spearman is just so athletic and so agile and such a great game changer and shot blocker for Miami. Took the bump on the inside. That's a matchup you want to see between Dipson and Spearman. You said it was a blackout here. I thought you were saying a blockout because that blocked <laughs> by Spearman was pretty impressive. I love to see good old post play, good banging, back to the basket. You don't see enough of that now. And she gave her a little piece back. You don't see enough of that now coming back to basketball now. Dwyer gets the rebound. So that's another thing that Miami has in their favor. They have nine, 10 now offensive rebounds and out rebounding Florida State 22 to seven. Short. Adding additional possessions. Five on the shot clock, Dwyer with the crossover, pulls up, tracks down her own miss. This is it to Lattimore and can't connect. Miami getting some good looks underneath but have yet to connect in the last 12 shots. Bajetti up top, knocks it down. And she's just ready. She's spotting up and she's ready and she knows that her team is gonna penetrate and kick and all she has to do is be ready to knock it down. Sarah Bajetti matching Cheyenne Day Wilson's points on the other side with eight. Both FSU with a little run on their own. With both players sitting with two triples. Less than a minute to play here in the first quarter. Spearman gets that one to roll in. About one second difference, and the shot clock is off for Florida State. Florida State's going to have to do a much better job at keeping Miami off the glass. Those second chance opportunities is what's keeping Miami in the lead. Ten on the game clock. Amaria Gordon 
Held down by LaShea Dwyer. Sent over to Tucker off the back iron, and that will do it for the first period. And it's been high octane offense from both sides. Miami leaving the first quarter with a four point. Their quality win against Virginia Tech. Huge win for them as well. Sarah Bajetti went off for her career high. That's one of the games where she had the National Player of the Week performance. Absolutely. Florida State has proven that, you know, through their highs and lows, they're a very competitive team. They can play with the best of the best, that is anyone. And at any given night, it can be Florida State's game. Tania Latson out of the break, knocks down the first three for herself, gets knocked down in the paint as well, but makes it a one-point game. Another short shot clock for Miami. Two to work with. Hot hands, quick and active by OMG, as they call her, with Omaria Gordon. Sarah Bajetti off the glass, gets it in one. She's showing everything that's in her catalog. You see her going to the basket, just active hands, you know, making the play for each other, and then just the ability to just look your defender in the eye and take it right to them and finish well. Sarah Bajetti leading all players with 10 points. Only player right now in double figures. Also gives Florida State their first lead of the ball game. Sarah Bajetti, a transfer out of Arizona, Arizona State, playing her best basketball of her career. Averaging 12 points per game, just off the mark for the free throw. Roberts working the inside of this zone that we're seeing from Florida State. Another short shot clock. Amaria Gordon with her second steal of the game. Sends it up to Latson and gets the finish at the rim. Florida State now up three. Those are two crucial turnovers that have turned into baskets for Florida State. And we talked a little bit about the turnovers in the first quarter for Miami. They're going to have to find a way to take care of that ball because they're converting these opportunities into buckets. Jada Patrick at the top of the key, nothing there, but Dwyer in the right position for the offensive rebound. Williams, who had back-to-back -back buckets in the first quarter, has gone cold. Sends it out to Dwyer. Three ball, off the back iron, another offensive board, Tamara. That's the thing that's keeping the Canes in the game right now is multiple offensive rebounds. I think right now we're at 14 offensive rebounds, and although they aren't really scoring off of those offensive rebounds, it's giving them that much more time on defense for Florida State. But the thing is, once they get the offensive rebound, they haven't been able to convert. They have seven turnovers to this point, Florida State with one. So finding ways to actually be more efficient when they're getting the ball back. Yes, I would love to see either team, you know, go to the line. I know we are, we've only seen Florida State go to the line that one time, but we haven't seen Miami or Florida State be that aggressive to where they are at the line and they are stopping the game because of their aggressiveness. Miami is 11-1 when they out-rebound their opponent. Mario Gordon was off the mark, and Miami will get the ball back. Allie Stedman. Comes in the ball game for Miami. And she'll check in for Jaleel Williams. Florida State, 7-0 in this quarter to start. I think they're continuing to change up the defense. Maybe on a miss, you know, they're in man, and on a make, they're in zone. But Ali Stedman is here to stretch that defense. Blocked by the outstretched hands of Tania Latson. The C parted and she took advantage of it. Tania Latson, who just had two points after the first quarter, now sitting with nine. She's instant offense, Angel, at any given time. You know, she could just press that button and provide instant offense. And she's doing it not only on the offensive end, she's very active and she's getting steals and she's doing that on the defensive end as well. Day Wilson pulls up for the mid-range, kiss off the glass, and now she has double figures. I think Day Wilson's gonna have to score 15 to 20 points for Miami to be in this game. Tania Latson has a nice Euro underneath, couldn't connect. White was trying to hang on to the ball, Sakaya White. The transfer from Jones College. 
Bulls giving Michaela Timpson a blow in as Michaela Timpson checks back in the ball game for Florida State. Holdeg is a big body down low. She is definitely going to bang. She's going to add some extra possessions for Miami. She's going to block a lot of shots and just she's a really good role player for this Miami team who gets it done by committee. Kyla Oldacre started the last three games. Actually didn't start three of them right before that with Duke, Wake Forest, and Florida State. As a whole will be called against Sarah Bajetti. And that will be her first foul of the ball game. And I love the energy and the attitude on the court. They're taking these assignments personal, right? So as players, we know, okay, I'm facing someone that is really about that on the offensive end, and it's my job to shut them down. It's my job to stop them, and I am going to just buckle up, roll up my heels, and roll up my sleeves and get it done. Sarah Bajetti, the best defender for Florida State on ball specifically, has the assignment of Cheyenne Day Wilson, who leads the Hurricanes right now in points. Denia Latson has come alive in this second quarter. Snoop Turnage takes the bump. And Timpson in the right place for the nice layup. Much needed three ball for Jasmine Roberts. Jasmine Roberts providing that spark or stopping the bleeding from FSU. Jasmine Roberts. Knocking down her 21st three of the season. There's a couple of, have a couple of substitutions for both sides. Well, here are your next Sunday's ACC Network women's basketball game. 16th ranked Notre Dame takes on Boston College at noon Eastern. Then at number 12, Virginia Tech hosts North Carolina. And at 5.30 Eastern, 6th ranked NC State squares off against Duke. You definitely want to stick around for all of those games. It's been fun to just follow the ACC in this season. No team should be overlooked. And that's what it showed us with upset after upset each week in ACC play. It just shows you how talented and, and, and deep this ACC schedule is and this ACC league is. I mean, nine teams coming out of the ACC predicted to go into the tournament. Each night, you have to bring your best. Turnover for Florida State. Miami will get it back on the side. Going back to that, just the only other team that can match that, or a conference rather, is the SEC as Charlie Cream is predicting nine out of that conference as well. Have LSU, the reigning and defending champs. And Angel Reese leading the way for them. And then South Carolina and Don Staley not doing too bad. The only unranked D1 team. Well, Shea Dwyer tried to see if she could send it in the Lattimore. And that's kicked by Latson. There are a lot of eyes on women's basketball now, especially ACC play, SEC play, because of great programs and teams and coaches like Don Staley and what they've been able to do to advance women in sports. Women's basketball is the hottest thing out right now. You're following Caitlin Clark, who now has the most points in women's basketball, passing Kelsey Plum, and then you see Sabrina Ionescu that was going against Steph Curry as there's a foul at the top between Dwyer and Latson. But a beautiful thing to see for women's basketball. Tania Latson right now putting on a show here in the second quarter with seven points, nine overall. But Tania Latson time trying to get the dub here at Wasco. Don't make me get up out my seat. Broke the internet again. Oh, it's coming in really fast. Yeah, it's Verizon 5G. The network is crazy powerful. I bet you can't break that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I can. Wait, what? Beyonce breaks the internet, but can she break Verizon? Broken? Not even close. I'm running for Beyonce of the United States. Can you hear me now? No breaking. Y'all ready for Rocket B? Still works. Someone get me down. Yeah, I mean, Gecko's a beast. He's got that dog in him. He wasn't just awake before us. He'd already worked out how to help protect way more than just your car. I'm great at insurance. But Gecko is just, he's something else. Yeah, we're talking renters, jewelry, pet insurance. And then he'd come back at night and study film. Riddle me this. If it's so easy, a caveman can do it. Why is he working so hard? 
From cars to home to pets, it's easy to get go. You know you need protein to fuel results, but it's not easy when you're drinking the same bland, chalky shake every day. Stop punishing yourself and get to GNC for the best protein in the game. Look at this epic selection. All the hottest brands, enhanced formulas, and flavors that'll keep you coming back for more. Scoop after scoop after scoop. So bust out of your protein rut and actually look forward to those shakes with unbeatable protein at unbeatable prices. Fuel your fitness with protein at GNC. Yeah! My name is Mark and I was seriously hurt on the job. You want to think that your employer has your back, but over the years, that was brought into question. I wanted the Mayo Law Offices to fight for my rights. They showed that they cared and they did take care of me. Long-term disability, workman's comp, the Mayo Law Offices, they took all that worry away. And without them, I don't think it would have turned out as well as it did. If you've been hurt on the job, call the Mayo Law Offices. It won't cost you anything to see if we can help. The Mayo Law Offices took care of me and my family. They had my back when I needed it most. Hurry up, Agent. Only 20 seconds left. Uh-huh, but which wire should I cut? The red or the blue or the... Well, it's usually always the blue one. But there is also a green one and a yellow one. Oh, there. Red Bull. Behind you. Drink it now. Of course. Hmm. Too late. No Red Bull. No wings. Welcome back. Well, let's take a look at who's in charge for both sides. I think we're still trying to figure out where Katie Meyer is in all of the side for Miami in her 19th season, coming off a historic run for Miami in this program, their first Elite Eight. The former Duke standout as well as Brooke Wyckoff in her second season with Florida State as the head coach. The head coach being named after Sue Simrown retired in a standout for Florida State as well, so coaching her former school as well. It's just nice when you can see people that go on and have played, been products of this conference and get opportunities in the head coach chair. Tania Latson has two to work with, sends it to Timpson, blocked at the rim by Lattimore. Lattimore has done an amazing job for Miami in the app of Lamaya Hilton. And so you think that, you know, you're going to get some extra minutes. What are you going to do with those extra minutes? And Lattimore has proven that she is ready for the moment. She is ready for the increased minutes, as you see right there, impacting the game on both sides of the floor. Latasha Lattimore actually had her season-high 14 points against Florida State in their first matchup just two weeks ago. Patrick trying to work herself back door. Lattimore, to your point, has been the answer for them out of the break. Absolutely. She moves very well without the basketball, and she is up to whatever challenge is in front of her. You know, she had some adversity last year, but she is definitely coming to her own this year. Sarah Bajetti knocks down her third triple of the day and ends the 7-0 scoring run for Miami. I don't know. Miami's going to have to pick her up from half court. Maybe she was watching a little bit of the NBA three-point contest last night. Who was it? At this point, we're getting offense in the carryover on this beautiful Sunday afternoon in Miami. Maria Gordon tried to put a couple of moves towards the basket, couldn't finish. And also get the ball back underneath, reset shot clock at 20. Miami with the one-point edge. Early look on the inside, when in doubt for Florida State, get it to KK Timpson. So Michaela Timpson now with eight points, and Julia Williams picks up her first personal foul. Timpson shooting 65% from the free throw line this season. But we talked about her in the open. Four straight games with double doubles. 13 on the season and completes the three-point play. Well, she had 22 and 10 against Miami just two weeks ago. So you know that there is a focus on Timpson and keeping her off the board. Three outside, Cheyenne Day Wilson. I like the oh, trap they talk. They're going back and forth with each other. But Cheyenne better guard her because she will pull it from the U. You gotta love it, Cheyenne Day Wilson dawing at Sarah Bajetti. 
and why not? I mean, that's a rivalry right there. That is how you go at each other. <laughs> Gordon pulls up, can't connect. Timpson got a hand on it and gets fouled. Took a hit to the face. Everything seems to be okay. So Timpson will head straight back to the free throw line after she completed the three-point play. I think the ball may have gotten her in the face. So Cheyenne Day Wilson picking up the foul there. Substitution Spearman checks back in the ball game for Miami. As Lattimore takes a seat. Bench production is going to be huge for Miami. Knocks down the first one. Well, this is Wednesday night's men's basketball matchup. Right here on the AC Network, PJ Hall and Clemson take on Georgia Tech. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern as Timpson knocks down her second of the pair. Timpson, 16th in scoring in the ACC. Top five in rebounds. Cheyenne Day Wilson still filling it in and out for that one. Florida State with the one point lead. Also in the bonus with 2.24 left. Beautiful look to Timpson from Latson as she connects. There seems to be, you know, when, when Florida State is getting into the meat of this Miami defense, there seems to be a little lag on that drop or that rotation that's allowing these easy opportunities at the basket. Roberts off the bounce, one too many steps. So that'll be a travel and the eighth turnover for Miami. How about seven lead changes in this quarter alone, Tamara? We talked about both sides, the potent offense, but I think it's important as far as the depth, what that looks like for Miami. In their previous matchup, the bench had 31 points to Florida State six. Absolutely, I believe there were eight lead changes last game, last time they met up, and so we knew that coming into this game, this was gonna be a close game, and both teams are have to come and bring their best. It's gonna be neck and neck. Tania Latson with such body control, able to weave in and out, get to the bucket. I think that's the step that she's made in her game in this season, just understanding how people are playing her. Katie Meyer saying we have to build a wall, and she was able to get around it. Outside look, no good from Jada Patrick. Jada Patrick right now, 0 for 6 from the field. Off the leg, we'll go back to Florida State as Latimer with a quick break will sub back into the ball game. Miami will add a little bit more height with Spearman and Lattimore in at the same time. We've seen this look a few times over the past several weeks, and it seemed to work for Miami. Gives them a little more height, gives them a little bit more advantage, rebounding and blocking shots, and just forcing Florida State to make these types of decisions. Turnage might have. Put Latson in a tough position as there's a turnover, but Timpson able to cover their back. It's the rebound as we're under a minute to play to close out the first half. Omaria Gordon, since that she can get a two for one, couldn't connect on the three, but tonight Latson able to pull it in. Crossover, dish, Timpson takes the bump. More free throws on the way for Michaela Timpson. Let's State doing a great job at getting to the line, getting to the basket, being aggressive, allowing Miami players, like taking that hit and going to the free throw line just to get an easy two. Free throws five and six on the way for the Knowles, and Miami has yet to take a trip to the free throw line. This is going to be the second game that Miami has not had the opportunity to get to the free throw line in the first half. Of course, if they don't go in the next 44.6 seconds. <laughs> There's always room, you never know. Timpson has been excellent from the free throw line. Five for five from the charity stripe as we're under 40 seconds in the game clock in the first half. Jada Roberts still looking for her first bucket, gets it. Jessica. Robert, excuse me, now with 
six points, and I was looking at Jada Patrick rather, but Jasmine Roberts now with seven points and three for eight from the field. Ten seconds. They get the ball to Latson, who swings it. Gordon pulls up. Gets the foul as well on that attempt with 5.2 left on the game clock. Two free throws on the way for the Knowles, and we've said that a couple of times. And you hate to see this at the end of the quarter, at the end of the shot clock. Just picking up her second foul, Jasmine Roberts sending Gordon to the line. So Jasmine Roberts will come out of the ball game. Jada Patrick will actually check back in. There's Omaria Gordon shooting 76% from the free throw line. The two-time Florida Gatorade Player of the Year misses the mark on the first one. Knocks down the second of the pair. Williams pulls up over the outstretched hand of Timpson. Great contest as that will bring the first half to a close. Florida State with a six point lead. Four players now. May or may not be on Latson, may or may not be on Timpson. You know, but Jetty has shown that, hey, I'm here, you're gonna have to guard me. And, and guess what? She's often the one that's guarding the best player on the other team. And so it is just great to see this in women's basketball as they can continue to evolve and transition and adjust to different offenses and defenses. Seven lead changes already in this ball game. Florida State, who had a 26 to 16 second quarter over Miami, has the lead as we start. Sarah Bajetti outside, just short, and Dwyer actually fouls. So three free throws on the way for Sarah Bajetti. Oh, she is picking up where she left off. They, Miami can't allow Sarah Bajetti to have this amount of space because she has shown that she can knock down the three at any given time, any place on the court. That is a third foul for Lachey Dwyer. Only other person with more than one foul for Miami is Jasmine Roberts. And she's sitting at two now as Sarah Bajetti has two more on the way. Officials on the call, Denise Brooks, Ed Sedlaski, and Pulani Spurlock Welsh for your officials today. Miami with a little different look coming out of halftime with Shay Dwyer and Lattimore making that start. It's gonna be important for Miami to be able to get to the free throw line. Miami is four and six when they do not outscore their opponents at the free throw line and 11 and two when having more field free throw attempts than their opponent. Day Wilson at the rim, able to kiss that off the glass, continues on her run in this ball game already, now sitting with 17. I guess it's the Day Wilson and Bajetti show. It's been fun to watch. Florida State winning that first matchup of the season, 75 to 68 against Miami. Tania Latson finding a pocket in that zone, pulls up for the mid-range. Miami's gonna have to communicate that if someone at the high post, and if that person is lats and they cannot allow her to have that wide open shot. Day Wilson seeing a little bit of everybody in the second half. You saw the face guard by Sarah Bajetti in the first half as well. Cheyenne Day Wilson leading all scores with 17. Third quarter is typically Miami's quarter. They, they average probably 20 points or more in the third quarter. I know that Florida State had that huge second quarter with 26 points. The third quarter is where Miami typically thrives. Timpson, a lot of bodies around her, and Lattimore gets her with the hip, so that'll be a foul on Lattimore. Lattimore picks up her first personal as they huddle up. I have my hand straight up. Got her a little bit with the body underneath. Michaela Timpson in the last game had 10 points in the third quarter. So we'll see if this is something that she starts to feel for herself as well before that free throw from Amaria Gordon. The only three players that actually scored for Florida State in the first half. Yeah, they're getting it done without bench production, without the production 
of possibly five other players. Mind you, Amaya Hilton out for Miami after suffering a lower extremity injury. Actually had a successful ACL surgery, so she is with the team, and that's a big blow to their bench. Yes, Miami gets it done by committee, and so, you know, those six points, they are definitely missing. And Tania Latson's definitely going coast to coast and having her way right now in this third quarter. Miami's gonna have to find a way to slow Florida State down just a little bit. Tania Latson has about 15 friends and family in the building from Miami, Florida, played at American Heritage High School, looking for another bucket off the rim. Timpson blocked by Lattimore. William, Speedy, the Ferrari, gets a bucket. <laughs> roll, roll. <laughs> so that is a spark that Miami needs. Jalea Williams, one of those players that had a really good start at the beginning of the game, back-to-back -back buckets. Can she sustain that with a shorter bench for, for Miami? Well, she's going to have to find it. They're going to thrive off of those transition shots that they are so good at. I thought it was important that you said that Miami's communication is going to have to be better. That's the second look for Latson, finding some space at that high post area for a bucket. You know, we talk about knowing your personnel and knowing who's at that free throw line and what you have to do to be able to guard and sustain your defense in those, in those times. Latasha Lattimore is fouled there. She'll get free throws coming up. Well, Thursday night at 10 Eastern after our basketball doubleheader, the Nothing But Net crew will break down the day in the ACC with highlights and analysis of each game. That's coverage you can only find right here on the ACC Network. Angel Gray alongside Tamara James for Miami Florida State rivalry game. These are the first free throws for Miami as Lattimore can't connect on the first one. And this is what's gonna have to happen so Miami can try to climb back into this game. They're gonna have to stop the clock, regroup, stop the momentum of Florida State, and try to get things going their way. Second one good, Lattimore. Checks out of the ball game as Zaria Spearman will check in. Miami trying to keep some fresh legs down there battling Timpson on the boards who's on pace for her double-double. And Latson just taking it to the gut of Miami as she continues her third quarter show. Tanai Latson had two points in the first quarter, slow start, nine points in the second, and to be continued here in the third. Dwyer bounce pass since off the mark for Spearman. Thought she was held, but it will stay with Miami. This is the largest lead for Florida State at 10. And are outscoring Miami 11 to 7 in this quarter. That's a little Kobe move. <laughs> Swipe through when you feel your defender right in front of you. Amaria Gordon gets her first personal. We'll check out shortly thereafter as Amaya Bonner will check in. Transfer out of Cal Berkeley. You know, Miami has found themselves in this spot down 10 or more points in the third quarter, and they have shown, you know, with the 17-point deficit and 12-point deficit, they have the ability to come back. Miami continues to get better as the clock drives down and as March Madness approaches. Mind you, this is a team that thrives at home. 4-2 record here in ACC play at Watsco Center as Robert Tabor to knock that one down. Jasmine Roberts now in double figure, so three players, or two players rather, in double figures for Miami. Cheyenne Day Wilson with 17 on the other side. Florida State with three players, Timpson, Bajetti, and Latson. 48 points, the rest of the team won. That's a staggering stat. If Miami could just stop one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
So a quick shot up top by Jasmine Roberts. That one goes out of bounds, so that will send it back to Florida State. Tucker will check in the ball game for the Knolls. Turnage out. Dwyer out as well, and Jada Patrick on the floor for Miami. Eight-point ball game. Florida State. Just with a two-point edge and scoring in the third quarter. Miami staying in this man-to-man -man defense. Florida State, who had the lead at half by six, or 16 and three when they have the lead at half. Sarah Bajetti sends it to the corner. Three ball off the mark, and Jalea Williams has the rock. Watch out. A lot of dribbling on the baseline and turns that one over, which will be the ninth turnover for Miami. Well, they'll step aside here at the Watsco Center. We'll do the same. The Knowles with an eight-point lead with 451 left in the third. If you want this, you got to go into the store and just be like, give me the Dun King's Munchkin Skewer. The Dun King's Munchkin Skewer. Too much of a mouthful? Oh, how many times can you say it fast? It's been a long time since I did the acting exercises. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> the Dun King's Munchkin Skewer. Out here, you're either lunch or you're enjoying it. The all-powerful Kia SUVs assembled in Georgia. Kia, movement that inspires. The competition's never been better. This is just spectacular. The stars have never been brighter. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. Clorox Free and Clear is tough and gentle. And the road to Greensboro continues as you look at a couple of the tournament championships by school. These are the current teams. You're seeing a couple of the blue bloods at the top of your screen, North Carolina Duke with the most. Virginia Tech picking up their first in program history. What a historic run they had last year under Kenny Brooks. Also made it to their first Final Four. Louisville as well in on the action. Can Florida State in Miami get in on the action as well for championships. We will soon find out. I think there's a possibility. I think it's a possibility for either of the teams. You know, Miami continues to be a team that shows how strong they are in the month of March going into Greensboro, ACC play and going into the tournament. And Florida State, we know traditionally what they've been able to do and how high powered this offense is and how they play for each other. 
it, it's absolutely anyone's championship in the ACC. Just a couple of seasons ago, Miami was able to create some history and get to their first title game in Greensboro. Came up short, but Katie Meyer has put together a couple of seasons consecutively where they've created some magic and history for this program. Sarah Bajetti off the mark there for the layup. Under four minutes to play here in the third quarter. Both teams in a bit of a scoring drought. Miami has gone about two minutes and 30 seconds without a bucket, and Florida State has missed their last five shots. Cheyenne Day Wilson trying to send it on the inside. Three to go. Just not a good possession. And on the other end, Amaya Bonner able to make them pay. So uh, pretty interesting possession for Miami in that last series. Ends up with points for Florida State. Absolutely. And, and Miami's going to have a break, have a beat to come back and see how they can cut into the 10-point deficit here at the Wasco Center. Used car shopping? Two rows, two dogs. I'm sold. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's pause for the facts. Oh. Like nearly half of all used cars, this puppy has been in an accident. But Carfax.com shows how an accident impacts price, so you don't have to overpay. Huh. Hmm. Unpause. Whoa, whoa. Wow, this is cool. Uh, yeah, sorry, they pulled. <laughs> Shop with the facts at the all-new Carfax.com. Welcome back to Wasco Skinner, Florida State, with a 10-point lead. And right now, both teams trying to find some offense as we have 3.11 left in the third quarter. Some things you want to see from Miami in their offense. Right before the break, they had a very uh, interesting, unsettling offensive uh, possession. Some things you want to see differently as we progress. Yes, it reminds me of what I heard Katie talking about in the shoot-around. She talked about each possession and stringing them along, or putting together perfect moments a perfect possession, a perfect basket, a perfect rebound, that perfect shot, and putting those moments together to equal perfect possessions, right? And so I think Miami just needs to take a beat, relax. You know, they're putting all the pressure on themselves, but they just need to play Miami basketball. When they're playing Miami basketball and playing together and getting out and running in transition, they're a very, very difficult team to stop. Well, the other side, Tanai Latson, who has 19 points, averaging 24th in the conference, has been putting on a show since the second quarter. Oh, well, she has not disappointed Angel. We know she comes from American Heritage right here in South Florida. She has about 15 to 20 fans, friends and family right behind us, and she is giving them a show to watch. Very poised, in control, things that we may think are difficult shots. She just makes it look so easy. Tanaya Latin, as we mentioned, 19 points. She had 15 points in their previous matchup just a couple of weeks ago. Two rebounds to add as well. But we saw her come to the bench, and she was talking with Coach Brooke Wyckoff just to get a little bit of an assessment of the game. And you also like to see that, too, just a student of the game, which she can do better, and we're seeing it. Yes, because you're a floor general. You know, when you have the type of role that she has, she has to understand what's going on around her. She's going to go to the subject expert in Brooke. And, and see what can we do better because there are certain things that, you know, Brooke's not going to be able to communicate to her team and she'll have to be that floor general to keep everybody together and do just that. I know a couple of the Miami fans here are like, how do we let her get out of here? <laughs> yes, you know, Miami, uh, uh, Miami and Florida State was like neck and neck. It was yes. a rivalry in recruiting too, if you will. And so Florida State was able to secure Latin and she's been phenomenal for them. I mean, down the line, you can find a couple of, you know, Florida natives and Miami natives on the Florida State roster with two Amaria Gordon from Bradenton, Florida, but the three two-time Florida Gator player rate Gatorade player of the year is. You said they needed more flow. Cheyenne Day Wilson out of the break gives you that. She has to call her number. She understands that she spent a significant amount of time at the shoot around continuing to work on these things because she understands how important it's going to be for her to remain aggressive offensively for Miami. Poked away. Jada Patrick. 
Cheyenne Day Wilson has some real estate. Tried to knock it down. Didn't have enough. Tania Latson taking on the gander. Working on the baseline, takes the bump, and Tania Latson saw four black jerseys in front of her, and there were no breaks. Just the pursuit of the basket, the relentlessness not to be denied. So Delia Williams picks up her second personal as Omaria Gordon checks back in the ball game for Amaya Bonner. Amaria Gordon, who is averaging double figures for Florida State, has yet to score a field goal in this ball game. And there you have it. <laughs> I think you need to play the lotto, Angel. <laughs> <laughs> You've called a lot of things tonight that have been spot on. To the rim, couldn't knock it down. Jasmine Roberts, who has her first career double-double, will get two free throws at the charity stripe as Sarah Bajetti picks up her second. Jasmine Roberts has been that constant, that consistent force on this Miami team. She has carried them through the NCAA tournament last season and just morphed into this year, you know, with the transfers and trying to find that chemistry with everyone. She has been that consistent force on this team. Basketball is just in her blood, though. Out of Jacksonville, Florida. Actually, the cousin to Courtney Williams, who's the eighth draft pick in 2016, coming out of South Florida. And now thriving in the WNBA. We believe she made a team switch out of Chicago. Now with Minnesota is Tania Latson. We're seeing the energy come alive in Tania Latson. 22 points for Tania Latson. Cheyenne Day Wilson still on the floor for Miami. So buckle up. 20 points for Cheyenne Day Wilson. And Florida State has not found an answer for her yet. Step back and she wanted the contact. Nothing there. Stutter step and a carry is called. So Denise Brooks didn't like that. Ball handling by Tania Latson. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Could have gone either way. I think the stutter kind of added a little more attention to it. Lache Dwyer in the ball game for Miami. Every time Miami goes on a little run, Florida State comes back and has an answer for it. Miami has to put together consecutive stops and convert those stops into buckets to climb back into this game. After seven lead changes in the first half, Florida State has held the lead this entire second half, or third quarter rather, as we are one minute away from starting the fourth. First field goal for Patrick. who, by the way, has the ability to go from one field goal. You know, she had 27 against Miami when she played for Columbia last year. So she's very capable of putting together a lot of offense in a very short term. Yeah, she has seven games in double figures. So that's something that we are have grown accustomed to, seeing her on the offensive end. And you just see how different things are moving right now for Katie Meyer. And what she's trying to do is deny Latson picks up her first personal foul. Actually, Sophia Zulich was activated Ready for that Georgia Tech game. She's still on the bench, has yet to be used for Miami, but another player option due to the injury for Lamaya Hilton. And Miami's had some adversity with injuries, but it's like we say, next man up. Jada Patrick was trying to prove you right, but off the mark, 22.8 on the game clock. Reset to 20 for Miami, who will get it back. She's very, she's very consistent at the three point. So it's not a player that you want to just leave open and allow her to just have those open looks. Has hit 27 on the season. The push off by Jaleah Williams will give the ball back to Florida State with 22.8. So that's the third foul for Williams. Miami cannot fall apart right here. Very important how they go into the fourth quarter, how they handle these last 15 seconds. 
Gordon off the high double screen. Latson continues to advance his Sarah Bajetti that was tipped. So great defense by Roberts. The turnaround for White, no good, and the half court heave just short That's for Delia Williams. Looked a lot like Tamara James <laughs> earlier. Recap as you can see the difference right now in the game as we go into the fourth quarter. Florida State very disciplined in not putting Miami to the free throw line. Yes, although they have, they've attempted or they've caused six fouls. Only two of those fouls have resulted in free throws. Something too in the first half, and you you made it very clear that Miami needed to improve in this department. 15 offensive rebounds, but they only had two second chance points. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're they're getting those opportunities, but they it's just very difficult. It seems like sometimes that there's a lid on the basket for Miami, and they're just unable to get the ball in the basket. So 14 offensive rebounds in the first half, only one in the second. See the adjustment from Florida State in that department. A couple of the keys that Brooke Wyckoff shared with us at shoot around. It's one of Miami's strengths, being able to get second chance opportunities and get those points, especially if you have Lattimore and Spearman in the game. Four on the shot clock. Dwyer tried the reverse layup, missed the mark, and that'll be a shot clock violation. Shot Spearman couldn't violation. get it off in time. Just half a second too late, but you like the effort from Spearman. Miami sixth in the conference. As far as offensive rebounds per game, they average about 12. They're above that number. As we talked about earlier, they are 11 in one when they out rebound their opponent. And that's just good solid defense from Lazario Spearman. Building that wall, like Katie Meyer said, staying disciplined, not jumping, hands straight up, and just getting a little deflection off of the ball. The length of Miami is a little bit different for Timson to see in this matchup. Turnage comes down with the opportunity for Florida State, sent out in a travel call. So that'll be another turnover for Florida State. They're sitting at eight. So we'll look at it right now. Eight minutes, 45 seconds to go. Miami down eight with the ball and the possession. They are going to have to value each and every possession that they have. Miami had four turnovers in the third quarter. And that change to close. Jasmine Roberts stripped by Sarah Bajetti. Bajetti at the rim, blocked, but actually fouled by Jada Patrick. Well, she's doing a great job getting her body into the defender before she extends her hand. Let's see another look at this. Understanding that Jada's right there, understanding where her body is, and sacrificing her body to get back to the line. Robert standing 5'10", Sarah Bajetti 5'7", taking the bunt, creating that top contact was very important. Well, here are next Sunday's ACC Network women's basketball game. The 16th ranked Notre Dame takes on Boston College. That's at noon. Then 12th ranked Virginia Tech hosts North Carolina. That's at 5.30. And then 6th ranked NC State squares off against Duke. So three great matchups next Sunday. Make sure you stick around for that as we appreciate you joining us for this Sunday's action. As Dwyer, before that three, was one for 12 from distance. And big three for Miami. Sarah Bajetti, response! I am unsure how she continues to get open. Sarah Bajetti had three triples in the first half. It's been the spark for the Knowles in this ball game. Turnage gets that. Might have been tipped or blocked by Timpson on that last one for Spearman. We cannot... Talk about the physicality in this ball game to start, seeing the balance from both sides on the outside, too. And a shout out to the officials for kind of letting them mm -hmm. play. Let them understanding the type of game this is, the rivalry, how, how pumped everyone is for this game, and just allowing them to play through emotion mm -hmm. and to play through certain aggressiveness. Sarah Bajetti. 
Lightning didn't strike twice on that one. Turnage out hustles Jasmine Roberts on that one, and they slow things down. Still a lot of time left on the clock. 7.26 in the fourth quarter. Tanaya Latson at the rim, rolls in. And she is roaring. And silence this Miami crowd as she gives Florida State their biggest lead of the ball game as we're sitting at 12. Dwyer makes it 10 again. Dwyer providing some very quality minutes right now. Probably the only sense of offense that Miami has going these last few possessions. Well, her back-to-back -back buckets were the first time she scored in this ball game. Held scoreless in the first half. So Dwyer coming along. Amaria well, Gordon lined up the seams, couldn't connect. Off the bounce, Cheyenne Day Wilson creates some space. And the bump for Timpson will be her second personal. Latson just really well with using her body. And again, we spoke about how she goes left and how effective she is going left. You give Latson her left, it's almost guaranteed a bucket. Let's just look at the steady climb, though. Just seeing things, working things out, trying to figure out Miami and their defense, one of the best defensive teams in the conference. And Each quarter, really she's gotten been, better. Mm -hmm. So Jasmine Roberts at the line for Miami, 78% free throw shooter. These are her, this is her second trip to the free throw line, two for two. Prior. Connects on both. So Miami shooting 80% from the free throw line in this ball game. Now 83. And seeing some of that full court pressure from Miami. Back to an eight point game. Latson trying to heave through. And Brooke Wyckoff sprinting down the sideline to make sure that Denise Brooks heard her for that timeout. So Florida State able to avoid a turnover. They'll get the ball back on the sideline when we return. I'm a parking gate and I'm all out of whack. And if you have cut rate car insurance, this could leave you all bent out of shape. So get all state. It'd be better to protect it from mayhem. <laughs> Out here, you're either lunch or you're enjoying it. The all-powerful Kia SUVs assembled in Georgia. Kia, movement that inspires. True story. A trifecta of rivalry games can heat up the winter blues. This is going to be a fight all night long. First, number four, Houston faces number eight, Kansas. There's nowhere better than Allen Fieldhouse, nowhere. Then it's round one of Duke, Carolina. The best rivalry in college basketball. And number five, Tennessee, takes on number 10, Kentucky. Boy, if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. Experience the blockbuster triple header today on ESPN. She has it. The competition's never been better. I never let a woman do that. The stars have never been brighter. He's been for 3,000 career points. Come on! Deja Kelly. Oh, that was pretty. It was Amor Magic. Some brewing tonight. There's no stopping us now. This is just spectacular. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. I'm here courtside. Watch this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Watch this, watch this. Oh.
6-14 left in this ball game in the fourth quarter. And just before that timeout, Brooke Wyckoff had to call a timeout to avoid a turnover. Take us through the huddle for both teams. Oh, for, for Florida State, they understand. Brooke Wyckoff went over this in the shoot around, understanding those trap zones from Miami and how to break that in the press or how to become available and not get sucked into and lulled into those traps. And for Miami, understanding that they have to get stops. You just have to buckle up, sit down and play defense, and really, in your heart, get stops. Look this person in the eye, and then get to the free throw line and get to the basket. Miami's is best when they are attacking the basket and they are able to get to the free throw line and get easy points. As far as that disparity, five for six from the free throw line for Miami. Florida State, very aggressive in this ball game. they shot 15 free throws. Tania Latson able to get into the paint, sends it out. Five left on the shot clock, turns the corner, gets the bucket. Tania Latson with 26 points, flirting with a 30 ball. And she has six of those on the season. You know, and she's just do, she's not forcing anything. She's not taking terrible shots. She's just taking what the defense gives her. Cheyenne Day Wilson comes to two. Can't connect on that floater on the inside. Florida State will milk the clock. Time management. Turnage up top. In and out. As a shooter, I know you hate when those don't go the right way, right? Absolutely. Lattimore kind of bumped on the inside, taking a beat to get off the floor, helped up by our teammates. So Michaela Timpson actually picks up her second on this foul here. Team's third, so both teams, well actually Florida State with three fouls, Miami with just one as we're approaching the halfway mark here in the fourth quarter. Lattimore against Timpson. That is a grown woman move. <laughs> yes. I, you know, I kind of have nicknames for probably everyone on the court. That <laughs> is Slinky right there because she has the ability to affect that ball inside and out. And what a hard fall right there with Timpson and Dwyer. Glad to see both getting up. Yeah, just a jump ball. You can see the physicality on the take, but... It's her length, Lattimore, the transfer from Texas, finding her way, averaging about five points per game. Broken up, Dwyer has numbers. Four on one. Dwyer takes it herself and gets fouled. Stops the clock, gives Miami a chance to get extra points, kind of slows down that momentum. So Sarah Bajetti picks up her third personal foul. That's the team's fourth foul. So the next foul for Florida State will actually put Miami in the bonus. So something else to keep your eye out on, as you mentioned, just the physicality, the aggression from Miami, but also stopping the clock. Can they hit free throws? Last in the ACC as far as free throw percentage. Have done relatively well. We're shooting 83% before the last couple of trips to the free throw line as Dwyer is able to knock that one down. And if I'm Katie Meyer, I'm, te I'm telling my team, if Bajetti is guarding you, be aggressive with this. Make her foul you. She has three fouls right now. Body's tumbling. Slow On the other up. side. Shoulder dip as Jaleah Williams takes out Amaria well, Gordon, who just went that across the turning. lane. Four foul. You can see a little bit of it there. You didn't get the sense of it. I think this is a better angle. So the contact was there, but I think it, I think the uh, the sell was even better. Yep, she's a salesman. Up top, Sarah Bajetti able to get it. The full court pressure, something different that Florida State has seen in previous games. Have not been pressured full court from Miami. The amount of athletes they have in speed. 
Well, I think we're running out of time, and Miami knows they have to do something, including stopping Latson from going left. Makes it look easy. 28 points for Tania Latson. And the bump on the inside, Cheyenne Day Wilson doing everything she can in her, in her power. Putting Miami, this game close. Yes, putting Miami on her on the, on her back. A little bumped up from the fall, but she'll be just fine. Now 11 straight games and double figures. Called the game where she actually shot over 55% from the three-point line as well, and already has four threes here. So she's had five threes on three different occasions this season already. A lot of time left in this ball game as she knocks down the first free throw. I don't know if you're a shoe sneaker head, but the shoes they have on right now are pretty nifty. <laughs> I am not that much of a sneaker head, but I, but I am a sucker for some good basketball shoes. <laughs> With these old feet I have. Don't talk bad about yourself, okay? <laughs> so as you mentioned, Florida State slowing it down, a completely different look that we're seeing in this fourth quarter. The first quarter, we couldn't keep up. Pace extremely fast for both teams. Now getting into the last couple of sec seconds in the shot clock. To the dish, Turnage turned around and didn't understand how much time was left on the shot clock, a violation. Great stop in defensive series for Miami there. And you know, that could be a momentum breaker too. You know, you're used to just getting up and down the court, all of a sudden I have to slow down everything, make sure I get a quality shot, try to bring it within 10 seconds of the shot clock, and sometimes you lose momentum like that. It's just an eight point ball game. Miami trying to find a way to get over the hump. Timpson, hands straight up in a great contest at the rim, avoiding the foul there. Timpson with two personals. Sarah Bajetti with three, the only player with over two fouls for Florida State. Amaya Gordon from the corner three, count it. Put Florida State up 11. Kate Meyer wants to talk about it. 11 point lead for Florida State. And Omaria Gordon left alone. Bad idea. Just a little bit of space, not too much space, but just enough to lull the defense. And so Miami's defense is waiting saying they're going to go deep into the shot clock. But Florida State said, no, no, no. We have to keep you honest. All right, well, we have some stoppage of play. The NFL draft is just two months away, and tomorrow night we'll have our draft introduction show highlighting the top ACC players at each position. Kelsey Riggs hosts, along with the ESPN draft analyst Bill Gates. Jordan Reed and Matt Miller it begins at 8 Eastern right here on the ACC Network. 237 left in the fourth quarter. Amaria Gordon with a triple makes it a 70 to 59 point game. Miami in the bonus though. Can they take advantage of that with 237 left? You know, I've heard the term cardiac Miami a few times over these last several games. And so we'll see if they can provide some cardiac Miami right here for the cardiac Canes. Seeing if they have enough just to get back into this game, maybe force the overtime. Force the last second shot. Just a rush shot there for Tanaya Latson. Probably not what Brooke Wyckoff wanted. As time is on their side. Jada Patrick held up and able to turn around for the nice jumper. Full court pressure again, less than two minutes to play. Three possession game right here from Miami. Each stop is going to be crucial for the Kane. Cheyenne Day Wilson on Amaria Gordon and Lachey Dwyer with the matchup on Tania Latson. I wouldn't allow Latson to get the ball if I was Miami. Someone else would have to make that shot. Timpson almost tipped it to herself. It'll go back to Miami. 90 seconds left in this one. 
28 points. You're not going to get another shot opportunity if I am Katie Meyer and the Hurricanes. Someone else is going to have to beat me. Dwyer with that assignment. Dave Wilson, pump fake, pulls up, back iron. Both of her shots on consecutive possessions have been a bit strong. Tried to dribble out of it, will get fouled. Be the third team foul for Miami. So Dwyer now with four, Jalea Williams with four, both on the floor for Miami. 70 seconds to go. You have to foul out at this moment. Two of arguably the best defenders on this Miami team that applies that ball pressure. You absolutely need them right now. Miami has two timeouts. Florida State three. We saw Miami working on this in shoot around, situational, getting the ball in, where the trap comes from and where the foul comes from. What they didn't want was put Tanai Latson at the free throw line, though. Oh, and I think that Miami thought it was going to be a timeout for Brooke, but with that, Lachey Dwyer fouls mm -hmm. out. So that is the fourth foul for Miami. The next one will send the Knowles to the free throw line. So the fifth foul for Lachey Dwyer. Give some time for a substitution for Miami. Dwyer had the assignment of Latson. Who takes that now? Jaleel Williams. Jaleel Williams also with four. You said, hey, they don't carry over. You have to use them today. You know that they've left it all out on the court. This has been a very difficult task for Miami to stop this high-powered Florida State offense. So hand on the back for Cheyenne Day Wilson will put Amaria Gordon to the free throw line as they're now in the bonus. And to, the, and to the credit of Miami, Florida State's averaging 81 points. Outside of now they have to play the free throw game, they've held them to arguably 70, 74 points, which is below their average, which would have put them in a space to be able to come back and make this a competitive game but 21 offensive rebounds and not being able to really capitalize off of those offensive rebounds, I think is where you see this shift and this change in the game. Yeah, just six second chance points for Miami. Something that we talked about too, as they lead the conference and bench points, 15 to two advantage there, but just not enough from the committee there. As they have the 11 point deficit. Talked about this being a very big game for Miami. Charlie Cream projecting them as a nine seed. Nine teams, he's saying, should get in to the big dance. Can Miami keep dancing? Well, I don't think this game, you know, uh, makes that much of a difference whether or not they drop out of this ninth seed or not. Um, the Cream projection projects that it doesn't matter because of such a strong schedule that Miami has had. And with the remaining schedule, they have Virginia, Clemson, Pittsburgh, and Georgia Tech. Miami should win out, but these are going to be some difficult games for Miami as they have been a little inconsistent. But coming down the stretch, going into Greensboro, they have shown that they are ready for the task. Yeah, Charlie Green saying Florida State could stay at a number seven with a win, could fall to as low as eight with the loss here. The Canes hold on to nine even with the loss, so that's important to know, understanding they're facing on the other side, so not being hurt by it, but have to win out and need a couple of wins in ACC tournament as well. On the other side for Florida State, they have a challenge seeing Louisville for the first time in their remaining games as well. So let's take a look at what it's looking like for their tournament resume. The big win over Virginia Tech really helps them. Taking down UNC as well, and they've played some close games throughout this season, especially as of late. Had a close game against Syracuse. Also a big one, too, against North Carolina. So 
You can see the net there. Florida State really in control of their own destiny. Seeing if they could finish out, and finish out strong. Last year dealt with a lot of injuries, especially going into the ACC tournament as Turnage took a step back. Didn't understand where she was on the floor and turns the ball over. See a little bit of frustration in Brooks demeanor as you know that that's what they went over in this shoot around understanding that the last five minutes would be sustaining those five minutes right and so being able to secure the basketball being able to rebound and make shots and take care of the ball Williams sends it out Patrick lines it up connects on the three this game's not done two possession game six points that is a lot of time. If you are a, bas a steward of the game of basketball, you understand how much time that really is. Two possessions with being able to advance the ball up. It is anybody's game still. So one timeout left if we can reset just a bit for this game. Florida State also has one timeout. With that, they'll be able to advance. But also looking at Miami outscoring Florida State in this final frame to this point, 18 to 16. Both teams in the bonus. But I think the big thing that comes down to it as well is what are they doing from the three-point line? Right now, seven threes for Miami, seven threes for Florida State. They're pretty even, you think? <laughs> <laughs> They've attempted around the same amount, mm -hmm. around that 20-point mark. Neither team being <laughs> shy to shoot the ball today. And having been in the series, eight threes that they knocked down for Miami in the previous game, Florida State had 10. Latson getting the ball back. A foul has to occur. They didn't commit it there. Amaria Gordon oh, that's has a the ball in the corner. Time. And Brooke Wyckoff is able to run literally next to Ed Sedlaski and say, I need this timeout. That is the last timeout for Florida State. You know, Katie Meyer was yelling foul, 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 and the players were just trying to get that ball, trying to make something happen, and that's exactly what they did because had Brooke not called that timeout, possession arrow goes to Miami. This is exactly what we expect in a rivalry game, right? Yes, ma'am. What's going through your head about the amount of time, 29.5 is a lot of time left. Also, Florida State doesn't have any more timeouts left. So Brooke is really going to have to gather her team and let her know, listen, I can't bail you out. You're going to have to use the special situations that we go over and figure these things out. And Miami has to put that pressure on Florida State to put them in those situations where they may cough up the ball or may, you know, call a timeout and not even know that they don't have any timeouts left because of out of panic and, and give them an opportunity to get to the free throw line. So what does Katie Meyer need right now out of this timeout? Switch everything. On ball, off the ball. You have to switch everything. You can't give them opportunity to, to just um, dribble the ball. And you try, and we heard Katie Meyer say, try to steal the ball. And if you can't steal the ball, what do you do? You get the foul coming out of the steal. So we'll see how well Miami executes. Tania Latson, the only player on the floor for Florida State, shooting over 80% from the free throw line. A kickball committed by Lattimore, so they'll be able to reset. 29.2 was on the clock before they took the ball out, and it will stay the same. Officials making sure nothing changed there. Might have been 29.5, they're saying. So I don't understand how this works. So if you kick the ball, you know, the official is saying no, no time left, right? And she's making sure the clock didn't move, but they're saying the clock did move. It was at 29.5, so a kick means nothing? That's what they're saying here. Okay. Learn something new. Timpson. Okay. Through the season may be a good foul for Miami as she's shooting 65% from the free throw line. But for today, Seven Timpson up. is 7-4-7 seven seven from the charity stripe. Also has her fifth consecutive double-double with 15 and 11 here tonight. Adds to it. You start to think and say, hmm, is this a lot of pressure now? Is she going to miss one? 
She has stepped to this free throw line under pressure, poised, and made one for two. This last one, it was. <laughs> and you did it on purpose. I know. I can feel it in your bones. I learned it from you, Angel. <laughs> now, Miami has to get a bucket. It has to get a bucket now. The bounce pass underneath. Lattimore able to track it down. A timeout called. And a board is one as well. 12.9 left. And too much time went off the clock for Miami. To not get an attempt or a shot at the basket. They lost an opportunity there to get potentially another shot at the basket. So they, they like this dribble weave. But Florida State was ready for it. And just understanding the severity and needing to get a bucket. Just the a sloppy bounce pass that, you know, Lattimore couldn't handle. And like that, you have to use your last timeout. You know what I see, too, is that in the fourth quarter of their previous matchup, Florida State held them to five minutes without getting a bucket. In these assignments, in these moments, Brooke Wyckoff said, we have to find ways to finish games. We have to find ways to be connected. On that last defensive series, it was never one-on-one. -on -one. It was how I can help the next, and I think that was a big defensive stop for them in that scenario because it did take a lot of time off the clock. Absolutely, and then you look at you look at what's happening for Florida State. You look at 28, 19, 16, and then probably 10 points for the rest of the team. But you see where the team is coming together outside of what we see on this paper. Have dropping down in defense, helping my my teammate, and and forcing Miami to use their last time out with 12.9 seconds on the clock. The score last game was 75 to 68. We're sitting at 73-68. How about those numbers? We'll see what they can do out of the timeout. Lattimore gets the ball, turns the corner, gets the bucket. Florida State has to go to the floor, the distance of the floor. Latson gets it. Latson, 3.6. No one can reach and touch her. Finally getting the foul. 1.9 on the game clock. And free throws on the way for Tanaya Latson. and she'll get two. <laughs> what did you say the score was the last time? The score was 75 to 68. It could very well be that as well. How did they get the ball to Latson? Well, she thread the needle. Look at the draw. Looks like we may have a repeat, or not, of the score from last game. Players are going to say, you know what, we need Tamara James not to speak when we are at the free throw <laughs> line. The ultimate jinx is Latin has one more. Connects. It's only because you went to Florida State, she made it for oh, you. So you now you're angry. Here. So now you're angry. I'm a little bitter. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, it'll do it for the game. Florida State gets their tenth consecu ninth consecutive double.